Welcome back! The Klingons have set us a number of challenges, which we must complete to ensure that Quetzalcoatl gets a fair trial. However, I get the feeling that they have no intention of letting us pass these trials. In fact, they are probably designed to kill us. And even if we do somehow make it through, I find it very unlikely that they will honor their word and actually give him a fair trial. Because it seems that Vlicht may have overstepped his boundaries and does not want his superiors to know that he killed everybody on Herakur. So, hopefully we can find a way around this problem. Otherwise things look bad for Quetzalcoatl. Let's take a look around, see if we can at least get past this first challenge. Quite obviously this lightning creature, I guess it is, is blocking the uh, door. Kind of reminds me of the probe in Star Trek The Motion Picture. Although it's obviously not identical. You look, but see nothing of note. Alright, there's nothing of note in this room. Okay. Well, let's look at things then, rather than the whole room. This section of wall was carved by some sort of plasma field. I don't think we're going that way. These wooden rods are support beams that were not placed. Hopefully they weren't needed, because otherwise uh, if the place collapses on us, that would be bad. The floor is incomplete, made of unrefined natural rock. A field of static lightning. It seems to be moving in a purposeful manner. If that is a purposeful matter, then I'll just have to take your word for that. You look but see nothing of note. That's just a door. A slightly antiquated Klingon lock mechanism. Way to keep that lock. A slightly antiquated... That seems to be it. James T. Kirk, Hero of the Galaxy. Your ever-logical friend, Spock. Your ever-dependable crewman, Ensign Benny. This is the first time we've worked with him. How do we know he's dependable? Well, I guess Kirk would have worked with him before. Your ever-emotional friend, Dr. McCoy. Why do I have the feeling that I'm about to have a bad day? You've been having a lot of bad days recently, haven't you? Captain, I have calculated the odds of surviving this and... Shut up, Spock. I agree. Not helpful. You've handled those Klingons well, sir. We've got them on the run now. Sure. How could you do it, Jim? I spent hours trying to save his life. And you just gave him away in seconds to the Klingons. Are you not paying attention, McCoy? Starfleet told us to do it. Plus, you know, the whole reason we're here is to prevent the Klingons from killing him, so... I think Kirk is doing more than enough. Let's see if our tricorder can give us some hints as to how to get through this situation. I really sincerely doubt we can just walk through there. Nope. That didn't work. Good thing it was the start of a video, so I already had a save. This rock has a high iron content. Okay. These wooden rods are support beams that were not placed. That matches the look description. Nothing to report, Captain. No overall tricorder description for the room. Nothing to report, Captain. Really? This creature oh. is composed of electrical fields. I would not recommend approaching it. A metal projectile might disrupt its fields and render it harmless. We do not have a metal projectile. An entry coder for the door, keyed to a number sequence. The tricorder is unable to determine the code, but can scan the mechanism. Well, we'll have to deal with the code after we take care of this thing anyway. Nothing to report, Captain. This thing is a creature. Does the medical tricorder have anything to say about it? It does not register as a known life form. Well, I could have told you that much. There are some uh, sticks over here. 
We are, wait, we already did that. Um, we can take those, I guess. Wow, we do not put them in our pocket. We just carry them. Um, can you throw the stick at the thing? We can, but it did not exactly do much. How about... Um, trying to phaser it. No effect. No effect. I guess that won't work. We have a projectile, but it's not metal. This box suggested we might need a metal projectile. And there's no metal here. Or is there? The tricorder did say the floor was made of a... Uh, metallic... If I had a high uh, metal content, so maybe we can melt some of that using our phasers. They are, after all, not disabled here, unlike on the jungle planet. You melt some of the rock. It worked. The melted rock is cooling, but still remains in a molten state. I think it will stay in a molten state. You don't really have to hurry here. Nothing to report, Captain. Nothing to say about the molted rock? Just wanted to check. So now we can get another wooden beam and coat it in metal. You coat the rod with molten iron. It hardens quickly. Now let's see what our newly... Actually, can I... I don't know what happened there. Um, can I look at this? This wooden rod has been partially coated in molten iron. Not very enlightening. Let's see what effect this has on the metal creature. The lightning creature. Nothing happens. It's hard to click on it sometimes. As I suspected, Captain, the creature is in stasis. It should awaken in 3.48 days. I bet it'll be mad. Yeah, let's not be here in that amount of time. You look but see nothing of note. Can we get the stick again? Captain, I would strongly recommend against disturbing the rod. It could result in awakening the creature or possibly electrocuting you. Neither of which um, is a desired outcome. Oh, well, let's see if we can get through that door. We scanned it, let's see. We do not know the code, Captain. But we didn't get the code, and Spock is unwilling to guess, I guess. Save new game. Replace previous game. I'm just gonna... Actually, I'm gonna make a new save. Save new game. Door. Very descriptive. Can we shoot the door? Jim, are you mad? That's our only way out. Violence will not solve our current situation, sir. I guess the phasers are not powerful enough to penetrate the door. The solution here is a little bit obscure because it's something that up to this point in the game You've always been able to do, but never needed to. <laughs> you need to contact the Enterprise. Captain, there is a force field between us and the planet. We have your position at approximately 30 meters beneath the surface of Rakor, and what appears to be the ruins of an archaeological dig. Keep us informed. We'll help you all we can. We can analyze any data you gather through the main computer. Uhura, prepare to receive a tricorder message. There is a door with an entry coder here. Try to analyze the circuits and let the main computer crack the code. Scan complete. Main computer has the code. We also read an anomaly. Something else has tapped into the key code. Shall I analyze? I want that door open. Affirmative, Uhura. I want that door open. I'm sure whatever uh, analysis is there isn't important. Let's just get the door open. We need to get out of here after all. 
Affirmative, sir. We will transmit code when you activate the key code. Uhura out. All right, now I think. Spock can use the door. And we can go through. And we phase the Captain? next. Captain? What is that thing? I don't know, Ensign. I believe, Ensign, that this energy sphere is some sort of automaton programmed to block our movements. Whatever it is, we have to find a way to get by it. Yes, uh, it seems our next uh, obstacle is this red sp sphere of doom. At least I'm assuming it's a sphere of doom. Um, let's see. Save new game. I do want to save over death here. You look but see nothing of note. A pulsing globe of energy. Surely we can just walk past that. Oh, the game doesn't even let us. Nope. That's not very uh, nice of it. I can't even see what this thing does. Let's scan it. The ball of energy is an automaton, Captain. It is an artificial construct programmed to block any movements. I can detect no other function or intelligence. Interesting. Um, well, considering there's not much else here, can't even look at the floor here. Maybe just try and shoot it? Automaton's energy level has increased slightly. It absorbed the phaser fire. No appreciable increase in mass. Huh. The automaton's energy level has increased slightly. It absorbed the phaser fire. No appreciable increase in mass. Oh. Extreme increase in energy level, Captain. It absorbed the phaser fire. An unexpected reaction is occurring. High levels of lethal radiation are being produced. Go to previously saved game. I like how Spock had time to calmly state that uh, <laughs> before it killed us. Yeah, that didn't go well. Maybe if we just blast it with the phaser on a higher setting? Extreme increase in energy level, Captain. It absorbed the phaser fire. An unexpected reaction is occurring. High levels of lethal radiation are being produced. Go to previously saved game. Nope, that had the same effect. I believe what we need to do is overload its energy. We saw it could take a stun setting phaser hit without ill effect. The automaton's energy level has increased slightly. It absorbed the phaser fire. No appreciable increase in mass. So what if we follow that up with a kill setting? Maybe the com combination is too much for it. Fascinating. These automatons are not stable. It's actually kind of easy to discover that by accident, since you can just use the stun phaser first, and then the... Um, um, And if that when that doesn't work, he'll probably just want to use the kill phaser. In which case this happens. Which means we can move on. I'm gonna save again. Save and replace previous. 
Let's see what else they have waiting for us. Daylight! We're almost there! We've beaten them! I don't like it. This was too easy. Easy? Are you out of your mind? Admiral Vlicht has a reputation for thoroughness, Doctor. If he means to kill us, we can expect more than we've encountered. Electrical monsters, things that explode when you phase them. What else does he want? Deaths, Bones. Our deaths. But, oh, and it looks like he's sending his guard. Captain, our sensors have picked up phaser fire. Are you all right? Captain, please come in. We're fine, Lieutenant. Mr. Scott has found a way to breach the force field. We'll call you if we want to transport Kirk out. Beam us directly to the Enterprise. Beam us directly to Vlick's position. We'll call you if we want to transport Kirk out. All right. Um, I don't want to beam out just yet. And Ensign Betty died. I actually don't really care right now. Save new. You'll game. see why. Replace previous. I'm just gonna save again. The exit to this particular complex, you hope. You look but see nothing of note. There has to be more, though. The wall of this corridor. Captain James Tiberius Kirk, deep in thought. Spock, one of the foremost science officers in Starfleet. Dr. Leonard McCoy, a rather disgruntled surgeon. This is too easy. I don't like it. I recommend caution, Captain. Well, maybe I've been too hard on you, Jim. I'm sorry. Apology accepted. Anything else here? Reading a high energy buildup, there is a Klingon explosive device present 5.3 meters outside the cavern. It could be detonated at any moment. I'm sure that's not as dangerous as you make it sound. Game. I guess it was as dangerous as he made it sound. Yeah, no. The only way out of here is to beam up. So let's just do that. Do you wish to be beamed up now, Captain? Beam us back to the Enterprise. Kirk out. Beam us to Vlick's position. Let's beam back to Vlick so we can finish the trial. Hopefully, since we finish the challenges, he'll um, let Quetzalcoatl go. How dare you! The test was supposed to take place without interference from your ship! You have shown all lack of honor! Honor? Give me a break, Vlick. You were trying to kill us. I had a feeling that no matter what we did, he was going to find an excuse to invalidate it. I believe that the use of guile to do what the enemy does not expect is considered very honorable by the Klingons. You didn't say I wasn't allowed to use my ship's computer. You didn't explain the rules clearly. Whose fault is that? That's a bit petulant. Honor. I believe Let's see that if we can reason with him to do what and the enemy does not him. expect is considered very honorable by the Klingons. How dare you lecture me on points of honor? I, the most decorated warrior in the entire Empire! I, who took the dishonored trash of my homeworld and destroyed it with a fist of steel! Then you admit it was you and not Quetzalcoatl who was responsible for the death of Rakor. Those who lose honor lose life, Kirk. It is the Klingon way. Then you will not object to presenting the orders from the Klingon Council, authorizing mass murder on Rakor. The trial is over! He is guilty! Done! Carry out the sentence! I won't let you. I shall... No, Captain. Let there be an end to this violence. I will not allow any more blood to be shed, save my own. I taught the doctrine of self-sacrifice, and I shall die of it. But before I die, I believe that Klingon law allows me to make a public statement. Intelligent beings are not meant to be caged either by tyranny or barbarism. Those who try doom themselves to failure. Once a culture has tasted peace, it will not desire anything else, because peace is better than war. 
Love is better than hate, and creation is better than destruction. This is truth. I, who was once immortal, know that truth is the only true immortal. You can kill people, cultures, even gods, but the truth will always survive. The death ceremony shall take place aboard the Cleata. I trust you are satisfied that justice has been done. Did you listen to anything he said? One day, in spite of people like you, the Klingons will know peace. I hope I live to see that day. I don't know if you're a praying man, Vlig. If I were you, I would not want to meet me again. Justice? Did you listen to anything he said? One day, Let's in go spite with this of one. people like you... Scotty, beam us up. <laughs> Captain's Log. We've returned to Federation space, having tried and failed to save a new friend. Quetzalcoatl was a remarkable creature, Captain. It is a great loss. He died for what he believed in. Yet so did many men who were judged by history to be evil. Dictators, assassins. Self-sacrifice in itself is not a virtue. Still, I cannot find it in my heart to condemn him. He had a great dream of peace, and it's been left to others to fulfill it. Let's get started. Ahead warp factor 2 to Alpha Proxima, Mr. Sewell. We have read your report on the problems at Rakur and evaluate your performance at 70%. You and your crew received one commendation points. A satisfactory performance, Captain, but there's still room for improvement. That didn't end so well. Let's try that again. Hello, devil. Welcome back. I've reloaded this save, and it seems to be glitching, giving me the sound of the lightning creature, even though we already took care of it. And, um... Let's see if we can do something else that may have a better outcome. Contact the ship again. Us and the planet. We have your position at approximately 30 meters beneath the surface of Rakoa and what appears to be the ruins of an archaeological dig. Keep us informed. We'll help you all we can. We can analyze any data you gather through the main computer. Uhura, prepare to receive a tricorder message. There is a door with an entry coder here. Try to analyze the circuits and let the main computer crack the code. Scan complete. Main computer has the code. We also read an anomaly. Something else has tapped into the key code. Shall I analyze? I want that door open. Maybe this time we should analyze that. Affirmative, Uhura. Sir, we have a secondary code that is nested in the Klingon program. Computers unable to analyze its function. Shall we broadcast it to you when you activate the keypad? Affirmative. Negative. Transmit the door entry code only. Affirmative. No, we want to try something else. Good luck, Captain. Let's see what happens. And realistically, this is probably what you would do the first time through. I just wanted to show you the alternative path. And this place. This is not Klingon technology, Captain. Even I can see that, you pointy-eared freak. Gentlemen, I suggest we start trying to find out what this is. I have a feeling we've come someplace Flick wasn't expecting us to go. Indeed, this does not look like it's part of the test. I guess if you get stuck here, that would be a reason to just try and... Uh, use the... Uh, the door entry code. Because honestly, I did this the first time. Why wouldn't you analyze the secondary code? Let's see where we are now. Hopefully it's something that can help us. You look but see nothing of note. A strange yellow light. This large gem appears to be a ruby of unusual size. This is obviously artificial. It's big red, green and blue gems here. This large gem appears to be an emerald of unusual size. This is obviously artificial. This large gem appears to be a sapphire of unusual size. This is obviously artificial. You look but see nothing of note. 
Some red, green, and blue indicators on the wall here, but we can't look at them. A pedestal over here. Openings on the platform. Place something in these holes. The gems, I would guess. James T. Kirk, Hero of the Galaxy. Your ever logical friend, Spock. This is the same description we got um, in the hallway. Obviously, they want us to place the gems in the holes, but which one? I suspect, Captain, that the machinery is activated by placing the gems in the proper slots. We should determine a system for this. I guess I should have taken a few more science courses at the Academy. We've got to get out of here, Jim. Indeed. Maybe the tricorder can tell us some more. Captain, it seems to be some sort of interface device, but I do not know how to activate it. Nothing to report, Captain. Nothing to report, Captain. Your tricorder's recording functions are working, but it does not seem to be able to analyze. No information about where we are. Save new game. Re delete preview. Replace preview. Let's see what we can do with these gems, though. Let's see what can we do with the light? Can we just walk in there? Not prime for neural interlink. Oh. Well, at least it didn't kill me. Let's get these gems. And unfortunately, you have to get them one at a time. <laughs> it's kind of annoying. So we have three red, three green, and three blue gems. With which we can obviously make any combination of red, green, and blue in the three slots here. Which, um means there are a few uh, uh, possibilities, but actually not as many as you might guess. It kind of depends on whether or not order is important too. So is red, green, blue the same combination or a different combination from blue, green, red? If order um, does matter, then I believe there are 27 different combinations possible. If it does not, then there are fewer. So, it's not exactly uh, that hard to brute force. Save new game. You do, however, want to save before you do this, because some combinations are... Um, not very good. I believe the only combinations that actually do anything are um, all red, all green, and all blue. So I will show you those, rather than sit here and go through all 27 of them. Let's try all red. Planetary defenses revived. All alien vessels in orbit destroyed. Load a previously saved game. Oops. We just destroyed the Enterprise. Okay, so not that one. Let's try blue. Blue and blue. I guess. All blue. can transport you only in proximity of nearest humanoid life. Transport imminent. Yeah, this ends up being the exact same ending as the uh, How dare the normal you? path. The test was supposed to take place without So I will ship. skip it for you. You have shown even though I cannot. It's kind of annoying the game does not get you into a position to load until it started the next episode. There's no way to load 
while people are talking, or cutscenes are happening. Same thing happens when you start the game, by the way. Like, you have to go through the introduction text telling you about the mock battle with the Republic before you can load. Which is kind of annoying. It would be better if it just asked you to load up front. That is not what we wanted either, so let's try all green. This is Bialdu, High Mentalic of Rakur. For defense, use the light of war. For information, use my light. For transportation, use the light of travel. Sequences are keyed by combinations of crystals. Integrator now active. So I guess the uh, light of war is the red light, and the light of transportation was the blue light, and this is the uh, Bialbi's light, I guess. Integrator now active. Interesting. Let's see what happens if we walk into the yellow light now, as I have a feeling that has something to do with it. This is Bialbi, the most advanced life form on this world. Thank you for informing us of the situation. It shall be resolved. Admiral Vlicht, this is the defensive system of Rakur. You have engaged in genocidal activities on this world. Have you anything to say before your sentence is passed? Kirk! This is your doing! No, Admiral, it is not. But that will suffice as a final public statement. The sentence is banishment to you and all members of your crew who are involved in this action. You have no right to try me! I have as much right as you to conduct trials on this planet. You showed no justice to your victim. The penalty for injustice is death. Kirk! Hoist on your own petard, Evlicht. Do you want me to help you? Uh, maybe we shouldn't let him die. I mean, he kind of deserves it, but still. You tried to send me to my death. Now you can rot as you get what you deserve. If I have your word that Quetzalcoatl goes free, I'm willing to intervene to save you. Hoist on your own. If I have your Let's word that, that Quetzalcoatl goes free, I'm willing to intervene to save you. Agreed. A life for a life is a just bargain. But his crimes are beyond count. I do not see what can be served by more killing. Idealism. An advanced concept. Naive, perhaps, but charming in its simplicity. Admiral Vlicht, the entity Quetzalcoatl shall be set free. If you ever return to this sector, the sentence shall be carried out. No Klingon vessel may ever return to this world. <sighs> Very well. I agree to your terms. As for you, Captain, you may return. I find your social development most pleasing. I fear that politics will make it impossible. Your planet is in Klingon space, but I don't understand why the Klingons never detected you. Their archaeological digs did come close, Captain, but I am very elusive. I waited and monitored the situation and chose to reveal myself to you. Now you may go. Heed my warning, Vlicht. I shall not be merciful a second time. And now Quetzalcoatl is still alive. Klingon ship leaving the area. We will be setting course for Digifal. It's the closest thing to a home that Quetzalcoatl has. It would appear everything worked out for the best. Except for the people of Rakur, Mr. Spock. Except for the dead. We have read your report on the problems at Rakur and evaluate your performance at 100%. You and your crew received four commendation points. A perfect mission, Jim. You are a model for all Starfleet. That old devil moon. Message from Starfleet, sir. On screen, Lieutenant. The Enterprise will proceed to the Alpha Proxima system while the indigenous race on Proxima III has not reached a technological level commensurate with entering the Federation, and therefore under the protection of the prime directive of non-interference, we do maintain a discrete monitoring satellite. 
It has picked up activity from an asteroid in an elliptical orbit. You are to investigate without interfering with life on the planet. According to the library computer, the Alpha Proxima system has five planets and an asteroid belt. A large asteroid is heading towards the inner planets and should pass close by Proxima 3. It passes through the interior of the system once every 200 years. The people of Proxima 3 call it Scythe, the same name as their god of war. God of war, Mr. Spock? Isn't that a bit surprising from a people whose technology matches 20th century Earth? Considering the level of warfare during that century, I'm surprised that it is Earth that did not have a god of war. In any case, about a millennium ago, Proxima 3 suffered a globally devastating war. Blew themselves back to the Stone Age, Mr. Spock? Late Bronze Age, Ensign. They rebuilt their world in half the time it had taken to get there originally. But the Armageddon was mythologized as a battle between the Sofs and Lucas. In that war, the planet was raised, and all the gods died except Sai. He had rained fury down upon the world, then went off on a long dance of victory. His return is a time for worldwide soul-searching and atonement. And Scythe returns, and our monitoring station picks up activity. It would seem that we should proceed to Alpha Proxima and scan Scythe. Indeed we should, but we shall do so in the next video.